Welcome back to Midpoint. Please welcome back the director at the World Health Organization Collaborating Center on Public Health Law and Human Rights, Lawrence Gostin. Mr. Gostin, you left us just a couple of moments ago with something that is frightening to a lot of Americans, certainly hearing that the World Health Organization does not have the resources, does not have enough to be able to bring Ebola under control to potentially stop it from becoming a global issue. Is America then, with the military, with the money, with the coordination that we have, the only nation on earth that could actually bring this disease, this virus under control? Well, I have to say I'm actually very proud of my country because we've stepped up when, when no one else did. Um, we, uh, President Obama sent military assets in. The CDC has performed incredibly well and devoted a ton of resources. Now, we haven't done enough. Uh, we've been too little, too late. We need a much greater surge. But the United States needs to do it. And President Obama is right. We need to get our allies in the European Union and elsewhere um, to really step up their efforts because this is going to take a huge international response. We're already facing a time when we're hearing a lot about wars in the Middle East and some people saying that we're going to be at war with terrorists for perhaps as long as 30 years. I'm not trying to be someone who's pushing a panic button here. Let's just deal with some facts and knowing what we know right now. But is it possible, in your opinion, that we'll be fighting Ebola for many years to come before we actually get to that point where it will be even under some level of control? I think it's possible that that could happen, and that would be uh, just deeply distressing to me. I think it's more likely that what we will see is con a, continue, a continued escalation in those three countries, then we'll eventually bring it under control. But what I fear is, is that it'll become what's known as endemic in those countries. And so there'll be a constant reservoir of cases that could threaten other parts of the world. Uh, and we don't want that. We mentioned at the top of this segment that a lot of Americans, the majority of Americans now in several different surveys, say that it's time to stop flights from coming in from Ebola-affected countries. Two-part question on this. Would that be effective in your opinion? Second part of that is, can we stop it just by going to those countries, knowing that people may take a flight from Liberia to Oslo to France and then come in that way? Yeah. Well, um a travel ban or travel restrictions, I can't even begin to describe how bad an idea that is. First of all, it would increase our risk. It would mean that uh, aid workers from the U.S. and elsewhere couldn't easily get in and out to provide uh, care and, and bring the epidemic under control. It would mean that fragile health systems would just simply collapse in those countries. Uh, it would also mean that humanitarian assistance, food, medicines um, could not get into the country. And then most concerning is that the governments themselves might collapse and they become failed states. These countries are on the brink. Uh, and if we uh, exacerbate that, it would be horrible. And the symbolic effect of the United States doing this would have a cascading effect around the world. So we'd basically be saying, well, let's try to close three countries up and tie it up in a cellophane wrapper and prevent the disease from spreading. But in a modern globalized world, just that is unthinkable. So about the minute we have left then, in your opinion, what do we do at this stage to stop more Americans from potentially being infected, such as the police officer in Dallas, whom we're still waiting to hear if he does indeed have the virus? There are two things we need to do very clearly. The first thing is that we need to get this at its source. And if we get it at its source, we'll be safer. Uh, secondly, we need to beef up our own public health capacities. I think Dallas was a great wake up call. So many breaches of protocol, so many reasons for concern, and we've got to get that fixed. Would having a Surgeon General have made any difference whatsoever? Probably not because the surgeon, maybe if it was an Everett Coop, it could have. Um, but uh, the Surgeon General's powers have been stripped uh, for many years now for political reasons, and that's also very regrettable. I hate to ask you this on a political side of things, but there are some who are blaming the Republicans for taking money away, and this is the problem why we have Ebola in this country. Is that about as foolish a, a thought as you've heard? 
I think it's a little far-fetched because I think all political parties have, have tended to neglect the public health sector and focus on high-tech medicine. You have given us some food for thought, unfortunately, and some things that we have to worry about, but thank you for putting it very calmly and very simply for us to understand it. Lawrence Goslin, thank you so much for being here. I look forward to the next time we get to speak. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Later on this hour, the Money Master reveals why that larger iPad won't be in your hot little hands as soon as you thought. And after the break, is the stealing of nude photos from an Internet account a sex crime? That's coming up here, right on Midpoint, where every day without fail, Monday through Friday, we question everything.